Well, Adel Abdel Ghaffar is director of the Foreign Policy and Security Programme at the Middle East Council on Global Affairs. He joins me here in the studio. Thanks for your time. So, look, Biden famously said that if Israel didn't exist, then the United States would uh, have to invent it to, quote, serve U.S. interests in the Middle East. With the departure of Joe Biden, is that now the last of these U.S. presidents that are avowed Zionists? Well, there's two points to consider here. The first of is the generational issue. You know, Biden was born in the early 40s. He grew up with the establishment of Israel. His parents were very pro-Israel. They were very cognizant of uh, the atrocities of the Holocaust and the need to protect the Jewish state. And he grew up with the sort of uh, uh, information that Israel is being attacked by its neighbor and the need to protect it and so on. So this may in, in, in time shift because he's at the end of that generation. But in the same time, we have to look at Biden, the senator, who was the highest recipient of uh, funding from Israel-backed groups over his time in the Senate, uh, more than five million. Uh, uh, so again, the, the Israeli lobby in the US will continue to have that influence. So in the same time, you will lose the generational politicians. But if you look right now, for example, at the, the primaries in New York, when uh, Bowman was lost and APAC spent $15 million to defeat him, you know. A so APAC being the Jewish lobby, yeah. Exactly. Yep. So that influence is not going anywhere. But as you said, that generation is going. And what does this mean for, for Kamala Harris? Because the assumption, at least in the Middle East, is that she's simply a Biden continuity candidate and that hopes of a lasting US-led peace initiative are not going to happen. It's, uh, it's unlikely she would be more of a continuation of Biden's policy. Of course, she has spoken a bit uh, against the ongoing genocide in Gaza uh, and the need to protect Rafah from the Israeli onslaught and so on. But overall, she has moved... Uh, uh, in the same way with uh, with Biden, so there will be no major changes. I think the major change may come under the Trump administration, and of course now with Netanyahu's visit uh, to Washington D.C., which we're watching very closely. Netanyahu is the ultimate ultimate politician. He will seek to uh, see these discrepancies between the Republicans and Democrats to get the best benefit for himself and for Israel. Yeah, I guess he's watching very very closely to see whoever wins this presidential election, what Israel can get out of that particular individual. Of course, it was nine years ago when he last address Congress, pulling the rug from underneath the Barack Obama's feet because of his uh, rapprochement with Iran over the nuclear deal. What do we expect Netanyahu to say regarding the war in Congress? Well, Netanyahu's speech uh, has uh, mainly two objectives. First of all, to ensure continued U.S. support of, uh, of Israel uh, and make sure that he, once he has extracted everything from the Democrats, that now he can get some benefit from the Republicans, especially should Trump win. At the same time, he wants to also show his home constituency back in Israel that the U.S. still supports uh, Israel and so on. So he had He's going to talk a very uh, uh, tight line in his speech that we'll see. All right. Good to hear your thoughts, as always. Uh, Adel Abdel Ghaffar, thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.